Yes. Who is a supervisor under Title VII? This presentation will be given by Eric Sanders Esquire, the owner and president of the Sanders Firm PC. The purpose of the presentation. The primary purpose of this PowerPoint presentation is to raise awareness with respect to your employment rights. Note, these are very, and I mean very, general guidelines. This PowerPoint presentation is not intended to, to convey specific legal advice or cre create an attorney-client privilege with the Sanders Firm PC or its agents. An overview. In the workplace, there are several federal laws such as Title VII of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 that protects employees from workplace discrimination. Under Title VII, the employer is responsible for ensuring that the law is followed. Employee liability in the workplace is determined upon the legal status of the alleged harasser. For example, the employer would be liable if it was negligent in controlling working conditions thus creating the opportunity for a co-worker to harass another employee. In cases where the alleged harasser is a supervisor, then different rules would apply. Vance versus Ball State University. In another landmark case, until the United States Supreme Court settled the question of who is a supervisor, various district and circuit courts could not agree on the legal standard. Before Vance, the legal theory of vicarious liability imputed to the employer for the purposes of discrimination claims under Title VII, holds that the supervisor must be in a position to hire, fire, promote, demote, transfer, or discipline an employee. The United States Equal Employment Opportunity Commission cited a broader definition to include those employees that hold the day-to-day -day supervisory authority. Vance clarifies and limits the definition of a supervisor. In this case, the petitioner, Ms. Mayetta Vance, an African-American woman, sued her employer, Ball State University, alleging that a fellow employee, Sandra Davis, whom Vance considered a supervisor, created a hostile work environment by using racial slurs and physically accosting Vance in an elevator. Ms. Vance filed a complaint with BSU and the EEOC. During the investigatory process, BSU took some corrective action warning other employees that racial harassment would not be tolerated in the workplace. But the workplace harassment continued, therefore Ms. Vance filed a federal lawsuit. Under Title VII, to prevail on claims related to co-worker workplace harassment, the plaintiff must prove that the employer 
is negligent and responded to complaints about harassment. However, to prevail on claims related to workplace harassment by a supervisor, the employer does not have to be negligent because Title VII imputes the supervisor's acts to the employer. Ms. Vance asserted that Davis was a supervisor, although BSU claimed Davis was not actually a supervisor. The District Court and the Court of Appeals for the Seventh Circuit determined that Davis was not Vance's supervisor because Davis did not have the power to direct the terms and conditions of Vance's employment. Additionally, both courts found that BSU had an adequate system in place for reporting and investigating claims of workplace harassment under Title VII. Therefore, BSU could not be negligent. The United States Supreme Court was presented with the following questions. Whether or not an employee or co-worker who has been given authority to oversee the daily work of another worker can be considered a supervisor for the purpose of determining employer liability for workplace harassment. Ultimately, the court ruled in favor of BSU, holding that an employer may be vicariously liable for an employee's unlawful workplace harassment only when the employer has empowered that employee to take tangible employment actions against the victim, i.e. to effect a significant change in employment status such as hiring, firing, failing to promote, reassignment with significantly different responsibilities, or decision causing a significant change in benefits. The court rejected a nebulous definition of a supervisor advocated in the EEOC guidance. This landmark decision clarified the definition of a supervisor for the purposes of determining liability for workplace discrimination claims, but does not change the employee's obligation to provide a work environment that is free from workplace harassment investigate and remedy any such claims and constantly monitor the workplace for such behaviors that may be exhibited or demonstrated by their employees. About Eric Sanders Esquire, owner and president of the Sanders firm PC. Eric is an active member of several legal professional organizations, including the National Employment Lawyers Association, also known as NILA, National Employment Lawyers Association, New York Chapter, NILA, New York, American Bar Association, also known as ABA, New York State Bar Association, and American Association for Justice. He has also served as general counsel to the National Organization of Black Law Enforcement Executives, New York Chapter. As a retired police officer, he holds memberships with several professional law enforcement organizations, including the National Organization of Black Law Enforcement Executives and the Fraternal Order of Police. Eric earned a Bachelor's of Arts degree from Adelphi University and graduated from the St. John's University School of Law. He holds a license of practice in the New York State Courts as well as the Federal Courts in the United States District Courts for the Eastern, Northern, and Southern Districts of New York. He has appeared before the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, New York State Division of Human Rights, NYPD Trial Room, New York City Office of Administrative Trials and Hearings, also known as Oath, as well as other related proceedings. In 2011, Eric received the You Can Go to College Committee Foundation Humanitarian Award. In 2015, Eric received the prestigious 2016 Man of the Year Award from the Culver Chronicles USA. Eric is available to speak about the law, specifically individual rights, as well as other areas. Recently, he appeared as a panelist for a legal symposium hosted by the St. John's University School of Law's Journal for Civil Rights and Economic Development. At the symposium, which was entitled Criminal Justice in the 21st Century, the challenge to protect individual freedoms, civil rights, and our safety, he discussed racial profiling, police accountability, and individual rights. About the Santa's Firm PC. The Santa Firm PC offer those in the New York City area legal services related to and connected to civil rights, civil service rights, criminal law, and discrimination. We firmly believe in everyone's individual rights that are described and guaranteed by the Constitution of the United States of America. We understand that our freedoms and liberties are sac sacrosanct and that they have been won in many and various hard-fought battles. We are committed in every way to protect your civil rights. 
If you have any questions or comments about the content of the slideshow presentation or general inquiries of the SANS Fern PC, please feel free to contact us on the website at www.thesandersfernpc.com, which is located on each and every one of these slides in this presentation. You can contact us via social media channels, or you can contact the New York office or the Yonkers office. This presentation has been presented by Eric Sanders Esquire of the Sanders Firm PC, your voice for justice.